Anyone? What is your A from here? And what is your B? And what is your C? A? 319140. 3. Wish, gerak semua kali besar ni. Hold on. 3. Nah, apa benda ni? Sorry, A is your permitted expenses, which is red. 319. Okay, nanti I check lagi. Anyone, any other answer? Wah. Unanimously. Agree. So let's see. Okay, what about your B? 292106. Alright. Good. I got the same number. And same ah? See, siapa nak same lagi cepat? Good ni ah. Jawapan I good. Siapa nak tag along? What is your C? 556973. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Wah, semua dapat full mark lah macam ni. The teacher must be very good lah. Okay, let's see. What is A? A is your uh, permitted expenses. So you should have your director's fee, your staff salary, your accounting secretary fee, audit fees, yes. But this one is what we call direct expenses, yeah. Your interest charges. Printing stationery is allowed and then management expense, is that allowed? Yes. Allowed, yeah? Oh, management fees is yes. Office rental, okay, office rental here. Office rental, okay. But what about your quick rent and assessment? Yeah. Direct. 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 It's a direct expense for which income? Uh, rental. rental. Yes, for rental shop. Lot kat atas ni. Right, so then later you're going to deduct this one against your rental income. Entertainment is not allowed. Depreciation is not allowed. So from there, you should get your permitted expenses. And your B is your income which is taxable. All right, chargeable to tax. In this case, uh, you only have interest and rentals. Dividend is exempted and gains is not part of B. But your C is all income, including gains from realization of investment. So you have your C there. Yeah. So now you have your A, B. Yes. You are not sharing. I am not. You're, you're, you're all. Thank you, dear. Hey, where are we? Okay. So, ni lah I duk buat tadi. Pen I okay lah pula. Alright. Um, so, we have your A. So, your B is your income which is taxable. And C is all your income for C4D plus gains from realization. Okay. Um, so, you have your A, B and C. So, what is your permitted expenses first? What will be your permitted expenses? Is your answer similar to mine? This is 319140, is it? Yes. Is it the same? Okay, yes. very good. Yeah, happy lah tu. Okay, let's put blue. And then your fraction of PE is, is it 41843? Where you have yes. your A, yes. 319, uh, B over 4 times by your C. So as long as you are kind of... So I will put my answer like this now. What is A, what is B and what is C? A is your permitted expenses which come from A. A is, salah je A. A kenapa? I punya 344. What is the answer should be? 319140. Okay, I take your answer lah. 319140, B is 292 which is actually come from these two interest and rental. And your C is everything here, 556 five, ah, Right. So you should get your 41843. Okay. And 5% of B, B is, how much is B just now? 5% of that, you should get 14601. So in that case, this is the lower lah. Yeah. 
So you take the lower which is 14,605 compared to 41,000. Now let's do the computation. You have interest on fixed deposit of 200,051. And okay, how are you going to divide the, dis, uh, the, the charge, the direct expense on the interest? So I show you like this. You have interest charges of 6,480 and then you are given the breakup of the aspect, uh, investment. All right, where is it? You are given this information. Yeah, so use this information as a basis to distribute the direct expenses. So how is it going to be? So total interest expense and this is investment. So you're going to allocate, for example, here, 1179 over 4433, which is the total investment times by the interest expense. And you do that for the three investment, you should get the direct expenses. Anyone have issue with this? So this is the total expense, interest expense. You're going to divide this 95,000 over these three types of investment. Okay, so that's how you allocate the direct expense accordingly. So for the interest on fixed deposit, you have a direct expense of, what do you get? 200. Berapa interest on fixed deposit tak ada direct expenses? Do you have anything here? Why is it that you don't have anything here? Is there because any interest charges? No, there's no cost of investment. Uh, because the interest on fixed deposit, right, the, the, the investment, the loan does not uh, used to finance the fixed deposit. So that's why the interest is not part of the direct expenses for your interest on fixed deposit. Very good. And then you have your rental, 92055. Where do you get this for figure from? It's from here, lah, from the information provided. And then you minus your direct expenses. Rental, you have a shop lot. First, you have the interest expense, which is interest charges 17415, but also you have the quick rent and assessment. The one in the question, you're right, the quick rent, 3,500 on the shop loss, that is deductible against your income from the shop lot, right? So you have two direct expenses here. One is the quick rent and assessment. The other one is the interest charges. So net, uh, in this case, your adjusted income from the rental is 71,140. Yeah. Your dividend is final, final, so you don't have any expenses deducted against your final income therefore you have your aggregate income minus permitted expenses how you decide on the permitted expenses the information you have done here right whichever is lower okay so what wil then you have your charge income of 256 586 so total ticks should be 25 here all right how many ticks do you have then if you get right answer uh, but remember that these two ticks ni kat sini ni means that I also give tick for the name, right, for the term. You have aggregate income, you have chargeable income there. Right, and here three is only one, two, three here lah. Right. So how many of you got correct answer 100%? Anyone? Eh, Shikin. Okay, that. Doctor. Okay. Yes. Doctor, kalau dia, kalau dia tanya disregarded uh, expenses Kita kena tolakkan dengan investment oh. tu ke? Yang dividend tu? Kan dia tak okay. tak dikira kan? Okay, this one is but, the interest here is disregarded kan? Hmm, uh, disregarded berapa? Expenses saja. Please clearly really budget tolak. berapa? Inter, uh, ni. Expenses disregarded tu berapa lepas tolakkan dengan hmm. investment? Tak ni I tanya je lah kalau. Kalau dia tanya. Oh kalau. Okay, let's say macam ni eh. Alright, let's say I buat macam ni. You punya interest expense katalah kat sini. 
interest charges for your interest fees dapat sini ada 300,000. Nampak? You see that? For example, ya. Yeah, your interest charges here is 300,000 but your income is only 200,000. So the balance interest charges tu berapa? Your, me, your interest is more than your income. So the 99,000 kat sini ni, ini lah yang disregarded ni. Because why? You have expenses of 300,000. But your income is only 200,051. So the expense which is deducted is only limited to the amount of income that you have. Balance of the expense, in this case 99,000, right, is disregarded. Maksud disregarded tu, you cannot use it against your other income lah. Nampak? Okay. Uh. So that's what it meant lah. So dalam ni kita dig boleh. Does that answer your question? Yes, Doctor. Okay, very good. Um, you like? Doctor, yes. can I explain again why for interest charges right, the rent you can deduct for allowable but why does the fixed deposit you cannot deduct, cannot deduct the... Okay. Because remember, here the, the investment, the information provided to you is that the investment, all right, you have uh, interest charges loan for investment 65480, okay? And the information provided that uh, single tier dividend, MJ Holding took substantial loan to make investment in the shop lots and the shares. Right, so means that the investment is only used for shop loss and dividend here, shares. So you don't use the loan to finance your fixed deposit. So because of that, the interest on the loan is not to be deducted against your fixed deposit income. Okay, understand that. Point. And because you can only deduct the direct expense if it is. Uh, it's used to set off against you punya If it used to finance you punya income So in this case the investment uh, The loan is not used to invest in your fixed deposit It's only used to finance your shop lot and your shares So that's why the, the interest expense Is not a direct expense against your fixed deposit Okay Anything else? Okay, hmm. okay, you can find further question on this uh, example in professional exam, right? If you type in the Google investment holding company, you will see that uh, they could be talking about investment holding company itself, right? Or you can look into ACCA question, right? And MIPA question, so all these Professional exam normally have question on investment holding company. Yeah, so I can only provide you with one question and the other question you look for yourself. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, now let's go to the second part of the topic, which is when you have to compute the tax for a, uh, for what? Um, apa nama dia? Listed company. Okay, we have done this. Let's go for the second part where you have a listed company. How are you going to, to do the tax form? Number nine. Okay. We have treatment for investment holding company listed on the bursa. Then you're going to use section 60 FA. So the A kat belakang. Yeah. Right. In order to tell me whether a company is an IC, a program, okay, once you are IC and then you are listed, then you have to follow these uh, rules, yeah? Okay, the rule says that any income, so once you are a, a, a listed IC, any income derived from the holding of investment, either interest, dividend, rental, from business or non-business, is treated as a business source under SPARA 4A. So, tadi... Alright, if you are Sendian Berhad, everything is as your 4C or 4D, even though you have rental from business. Alright, everything will be under C and D. But once you are a listed company, everything will be under 4A. 
So you're going to have 4A income, then you have 4A and the interest and the dividend and the rental and everything else. But your management fee remains as your section 4F lah. Yeah. So now you have section 4A. So when you have section 4A, the law further says that even though those sources of income are treated as a business source, in order to determine adjusted income and special income, the special treatment provided 60 F F A has to be complied with, right? So it said that no deduction or expense if allowed if that sort of does not produce any income. So it means that if, for example, your dividend income is final, even though you do have expenses incurred in deriving to that income, the expense is disregarded, right? So you cannot deduct. And the amount of allowable deduction for direct expense is restricted to the account amount. So just like the example just now, we have fixed deposit income of 200, but expenses is 300, you can only deduct maximum 200,000 depending on the income. Any excess is to be disregarded, right? Uh, and then you uh, cannot be absorbed by other source of income and cannot be carried forward to subsequent years. So again, right, that you there's no such thing as you set off against your aggregate aggregate income. No. Right? So if it's a the expense is more than the income, then it's a it's disregarded, it's a permanent loss. And then we have allowable, amount of allowable deduction for common expense, which is the main base on the gross income you said to the amount. So later you see that here, all right. You are going to look into yeah, number one, you have the direct expenses for each source of income. Then you're going to look at, you will going to have a common expenses. All right. And third one, you're going to have common capital allowance. Right. Common capital allowance under a, a listed company. Yeah. Listed ISC. All right. Uh, to the means of say income from each source, you can deduct capital allowance, but it's restricted to the amount of adjusted income. So it's similar. Any capital allowance, any if there is no adjusted, any capital allowance cannot be carried forward to the subsequent year. So it's just loss. Yeah, it's a permanent loss. So look at the example here. Right. So in uh, in general, what you do is that. All right. So for your, uh, you are going to have your uh, listed company. Everything is under section four A. So you're going to have your, for example, your dividend income, and then you have your rental income. Right, and then you have your interest income. So for each source rent dividend ni tak adalah because dividend is final. Right, so for rental income means that you are have your gross income minus your direct expenses and then you minus your current uh, common expenses and then later you minus your common capital allowance. So that's how it works for your, and then you do for another income. Right, so for every income you minus your direct expenses common expenses and your common capital allowance. Okay, look at the example here. Era Baru Sinebrohan is an ISC listed on the Bursa Malaysia. The income and expenses for the year 2014 are as follows. So you have dividend income, all right, gross is 400,000 and then you have interest expense. So here, the interest here is what we call direct expenses because why? The expense is directly related to the source of income. Right, you have dividend of 400 and then the interest on the dividend is 250, interest income 200, dividend uh, interest expense is 160 and rental you have zero income but interest expense is 70,000. Interest expense is direct expense and not a common expense. Then you have total gross income 600,000. How you get a 600,000 is actually from right? total gross income 600,000. And then you are given the common expenses. So this common expenses you're going to divide between the, the income. Lah. In this case, you have dividend, interest and rental. And you also have your common capital allowance. Then you're going to divide lah, right, between these three. Okay. So the total income of ERA is completed as follows. Right? So here it doesn't show any dividend because dividend here is final. So they don't show that. Right, dividend here ada kat bawah ni lah. Gross dividend, okay tak apa, kita buat ikut dia lah. Gross interest, so where you get your interest is 200,000, alright. So you have interest expense, direct is 160,000 and how are you going to divide the common expenses? Common expenses here, you see that here your gross income is total 600,000 so you apportion accordingly lah based on this information. 
So 200 over 600 times by common expense 150,000. So you have 50,000 there. Okay. So 50,000. So total interest expense is direct and common expenses 50 to 10. But income that you have is only 200. So you minus 200 only. Yeah. So even though you have total expenses of 210, but you can only minus 200,000 and the 10,000 balance is disregarded. Right. You cannot carry forward. You cannot use against your other income. So in this case, your gross interest, the statute, uh, this one is settled. But remember that you have the allowance, right, for your gross interest. So again, the capital allowance given as 80,000, so you apportion accordingly. 200 over 600 times by 80, you have 26,000 capital allowance. But this amount is disregarded. Any idea why is it disregarded, the capital allowance? Why is it disregarded? Why do you think it's disregarded for gross interest? Because after deducting the interest expense, it's already zero, so we cannot use it. Yeah, very good, right? After you take into account the interest expense and common expenses, that's zero rise down. So common capital allowance, even though you are entitled for 26,000, right, you cannot use that CA to deduct against your income. That's why it's disregarded. All right, gross rental. In this case, rental is zero, nil, right? So what, even though gross rental nil, even though you do have interest expense 70,000, which is the direct expense, that amount is disregarded. And again, your capital allowance, you cannot claim lah because your income is zero. Yeah, this we got it. Tapi dia tak show here. Dividend here is exempted. So whatever in direct expenses, common expenses, common capital allowance is disregarded lah. Yeah. So in this case, the total income in this case is nil. Even though the company the company actually have income of 300,000, at the end, they don't have to pay anything because why? Because the total income is zero. Right, so any excess from the direct expense and from expenses is disregarded. Capital allowance point, if you don't have enough income to absorb, is disregarded. Right, in a year of assessment, an ISC listed on the bursa also carries on a business activity, which is not main activity. You can have an investment holding company, so the main activity is investment. But the company may also have a secondary activity. For example, they may have a business, yeah, other business. And any adjusted law from that business will be given the normal treatment. Lah. So, katalah business income from that source, right, uh, have a loss, then you can actually deduct against your chargeable income. Bukan salah, against your aggregate income lah. Or you have your current year business loss. Okay, so any asset adjusted loss, okay, any losses under ISC cannot be carried forward. Right, it's a permanent loss. Okay, example 13. Are you okay so far? Yes. Uh, doctor. Sekarang pukul berapa? Baru pukul lima. Sejam lagi. Okay. Okay, example 13. Investment link berhad is an ISC listed on the Bursa Malaysia. In 2014, you have gross income and expenses. So, you have gross income from management fees, dividend and interest, direct expense accordingly. Total gross income is 1.5, common expense 250, common capital allowance is 200,000. All right, so total income of the investment link is as follows. Gross management fee 200,000. So, even though you remember that everything is under section 4A now, yeah? So, even though management fees uh, is under section 4F last time, but now because the company is a manage, uh, is a listed company, management fees is also fall under section 4A. Gross management fees, 200 minus direct expenses, 350. So, dah disregarded lah ni. Right, because why? It's already more than the income. Okay, so all these are disregarded lah. Right, even though you have capital allowance, so back to right. Okay, meal, uh, business loss, okay. How is that? Uh, common expenses, current year business loss, 183. Hold on, yeah, let me see. Management fee ni, dia tengah apa? For the year, the gross receipt expenses incurred are as follows. Management fees. 
in section 4F. Tapi dia jadi 4A, so dia ada losses kat sini. Right? Dia ada income and then dia ada direct expenses, common expenses, so ada losses kat sini, 1A3. Common capital allowance is disregarded. And then gross interest, you have interest of 300,000, common expenses, uh, direct expenses, 200,000. Okay, so adjusted income is 100. So here you have 100. Common capital allowance 40. Okay, common that. Okay, you have next. Uh, this is what we call statutory income. Dividend is exempted, so everything is disregarded. So you have aggregate income of 60,000. And here you have current year business loss. So why? Because in this case, your management fee is not part of your investment holding. Yeah. So it is regarded as a, another business activity. Right. Remember that just now you punya business main activity is investment. All right. Invest, uh, holding of investment. So holding of investment comes from your rental, dividend and interest. Your management fee is another activity. That's why they're under 4F initially. Right. So, but here because it's listed, so the management fee becomes a business income. All right. So, it's, un, it's, non, it's not holding on investment income. That's why they become business. So, the losses is set off against your aggregate income. So, losses from the management fee or the business or the management. All right. 18333 is deducted against your chargeable income. Yeah. So this one is deducted here but because your aggregate income is 60 only so the amount deducted is restricted to 60,000. Whatever loss, loss carried forward. Can you carry forward one, two, three? Which cannot be absorbed by Eh, ni boleh pula can be carried forward. Why is it can be carried forward to subsequent years losses here? Is it losses because it's from the business? Okay, let's see again, yeah. Where is it? Give it in a year, I see also carries on business activity, not as the main activity. Any adjusted loss from that business will be given treatment again normal, which is current year business loss. Therefore, adjusted loss from the business source can be deducted against aggregate income. Any excess of the adjusted loss that cannot be absorbed can be carried forward. So in this case, the losses from the business, other business, yeah. So here you say that um, other business. So your secondary punya activity lah. Yeah, source for subterior. So in this case, this one can be forward. But the losses from your investment holding activity, you cannot carry forward. All right, it's a permanent loss. But from other business activity, you can carry forward. So that's how it should be. Yeah? So remember that. So I'm the salah dah tadi. Loss carry forward, one, two, three, 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 will be used against you in the aggregate as I in the following, following year. Okay, let's see, uh, let's read example 14 quietly. Okay, in this example, example 14, it tells you the difference between when you have this current year loss from your interest. Because interest is from your investment holding, right? holding of investment, that 52 is a permanent loss. You cannot carry forward that loss, cannot be carried forward, yeah, cannot be carried forward here, let me right, to subsequent years. So that's the difference between having loss from your investment holding and having loss from your other business activity, yeah, under ISD. So the tax treatment is different. So the company is deemed to be ISC in the basis period for that year of assessment, right? So okay, uh, for the purpose of sixty FA, an ISC, all right, is listed as uh. Uh, ISC is listed on the bursa for any period in the basis period for year of assessment. 
the IC is deemed to be an IC listed in the basis period for that year of assessment. So it means that uh, if in that year of assessment, you happen to be a listed company and a certain period of that same year, yeah, then you delisted, right? So how are you going to treat whether the company is a listed company or unlisted company? So here you say that Ganda World is an ISC since 1st January 2009. Effective from 1st August 2014, the company was not listed on the Bursa Malaysia. So in the year 2014, seven months they listed, right? And then from 1st August 2014 to December, it's not a listed company, right? So how are you going to treat the tax? It said that although the company was not listed from 1st August, the company is still considered as listed for YA 2014. Yeah, because in the in the in the 2014, you were first uh, listed. All right, so 2015 only you'll be regarded as a non-listed. All right, you have to apply 60F lah. But in this case, if the Dang Wangi closed account 30 December was listed, all right, on 1st September. So in this case, all these years, the company is not a listed company. Only on 1st September 2014, the company is listed. All right, so you say that although the company was listed on Bursa on 1st September, the company is considered as a listed for, for year 2014, right? So in that case, uh, it benefits the company actually if you are listed, yeah? So it means that if you are delisted throughout the year, you are still regarded listed. <laughs> but you know, you're only listed during the year, you are also regarded as listed. So in both cases, actually give advantage to the company. So it doesn't matter in the year, it's if you are you, all this while you are a listed company, and then being delisted that year, you are still a listed company. Imputation, yeah? But all this while, you are not a listed company and suddenly you become listed in the year. Then for the whole year, you are a listed company. All right, on capital allowance and capex. All right, so we are done with your... Uh, I see. Let's look at the example that I've shared in the tutorial question, question number two. Right, Moronga Holdings is a tax resident company, Holdings Berhad. So it means that it's a listed company, year end 31st December 2019. You have income from dividend interest and gain on sale of investment. And then you have expenses, audit fee, salary, bank charges, all these things. Dividend income derived from Arena, one third to 1.5 million and 875 respectively. Interest income, 203 is derived from Singapore and interest from subsidiaries. Interest expense incurred on the term loan which was used to acquire investment. So you have had the interest expense which is the direct expense. Mana punya interest expense that mentioned here. All right, 400,000. Uh, interest expense, you have 5 million, 2.5, 1.5 advance to subsidiaries. Uh, capital allowance is 30,000. Determine whether Maranga, okay, in this case, right, you are given that you you have to determine whether the company is a uh, listed or non listed. All right, so in this case, is the company listed company? Uh, is the company is RSC? I'm assuming that it's not a listed company, assuming it's a listed company. Okay, what? Okay, can you help me how to decide whether a company is a listed or is a ISC or not? What's the formula? What's the percentage? Is Moranga investment holding company? Oh. First question, how to decide on ISC? You only take income from 4C and 4D over total income. Is Merengah holding uh, ISC? 
yes. Yeah, because you have to take income, which is dividend. Okay. Okay. All this income lah. Alright, for C four D dividend and interest lah. So you get more than eighty percent. Yeah, so it's about hundred percent actually. The income is from holding of investment, and then uh, uh, the, the law says that uh, compute the tax payable of Boranga Holding Berhad, assuming it's not a listed company. Okay, can a, can a Berhad here, right, be a listed or unlisted? Huh. Can a Berhad become a listed company? Can a Berhad become a non-listed company? I think both is possible. Both is possible, right? Okay, my question is, must all Berhad be listed? Uh, no, because of those. No. I think yes. All right. What do you mean by listed? Listed in the stock exchange. Oh. Yeah, means that the shares of the company is traded openly lah in the stock exchange. Yeah, but you can have a berhad which is not listed. It means that, yeah, it's a berhad, right? But it's just that it's not, uh, the shares is not traded, right? Under Bursa Malaysia. So, but all Bursa, all listed company is a berhad. But not all berhad is a listed. You get that? So that's why the question here, it says that compute the tax payable of Merengah assuming that it's not a listed company, assuming Merengah. So you have two questions, two computation here. One is as a listed, unlisted. The other one is a listed. But the problem here is that how are you going to decide on the common expenses? You are not given the common expenses. You are not also given, oh, capital allowance ada. What is common expenses? Not given. So how are you going to decide on the common expenses? If you are not given, I suggest that you take out uh, the permitted expenses and common expenses. Yeah, the permitted expenses as your common expense. So you uh, maybe uh, do the unlisted company. Uh, sorry, sorry. Do question number C. Right? Assuming the company is a listed company. Can you do that? It's 522. I give you 15 minutes. Right? We come, we come back at 540. More than 15 too. Boleh lah. Right, 540. Can you do that? 